little slimy creatures you don't want to step into. That is what you generally think about when talking about worms. Not if you're born somewhere around the 1980s. Then you will probably know that worms can be dangerous as well. Worms was a computer game made by Team 17 in 1995 and most kids have played it a lot. There are different versions made of the game even leaving the computer and going over to the console. Now, worms have left the digital world and wandered into the board gaming arena. Are you cunning enough to be the last worm standing? Are you able to manage the wind and hit every shot? Let's find out if this game is worth backing. First, a brief overview of the game. Worms is playable for 2 to 6 players. It's an arena combat game, free for all style. And the game takes place on a map that can change, or will change. Players take turns moving their worms, building defenses, using weapons and trying to pick up supply crates to bolster their arsenal of options. Players take control of their party of 4 worms and face off against the other players. Players get a starting hand of cards consisting of an Uzi, Bazooka, Ninja Rope and Girder. Then the starting weapon cards get shuffled and all players receive one more weapon. During the setup of the game you will be placing terrain tokens on the board consisting of oil drums that can explode, supply tokens and mines, well these can explode as well. A player can activate one worm in their turn. The activation can be healing a worm that is damaged and inch or jump and inch or jump again and play a weapon card. After that the player ends their turn and draws a drop card. If the supply drop deck is empty it's sudden death. All worms are instantly dead if they take damage. Going over to combat. You attack if you have played a weapon card. A weapon card will have a couple of icons on it. An action line, this will tell you if you need line of sight. Next we have an arrow that indicates the range of the weapon. Then under that we have a box with extra text telling us the amount of dice you need to use, accuracy and if this attack is for the whole hex or just the worm you are targeting. If you hit one or multiple worms with a blast attack, the worms are knocked down. If one of these worms is hit again, they are dead. Now depending on how you play the game, like if parting gifts is enabled, other things might happen when a worm dies. Again, when you have used the blast attack, a blast marker is placed on the hex that has been hit. If three or more blast markers have been placed, there will be a water tile placed upon it. Sometimes you don't roll the score that you are aiming for. That means that you need to resolve one of the dice rolls of your choice. The wind might point into one of the six directions and if you rolled three directions, it's your choice where the attack will land. So on to my opinion of the game and its price. So this game is not going to be a highly claimed board game. But it can be really fun with the right player group. I believe the right player group will probably not be 90% of the people on Kickstarter, GameFound and BackerKit. That said, I think it's a good family friendly board game. Though the game isn't family friendly priced starting at £79. This could be fixed however. Personally, I don't see a reason why this game should have 45 worms and of those there are 15 plus different poses of minis. I don't think I have ever said this, but just give me all the worms in one pose. That might make manufacturing cheaper and less art is needed, thus again cheaper. The terrain, like the oil drums, mines and supply crates, could be of cardboard. I don't care at this point. After that, most of it is already in cardboard, so I can't explain the price of £79 other than maybe the licensing costs. What I really like about this game is the easiness in which you can teach other players how to play the game. The game is fast, it has the ability to create those unforgettable table moments where everything went right or wrong and it was just a blast. It is very accurate 
compared to the digital version. It also doesn't have a lot of depth. But for a game like this, that is perfect. It does rely heavily on luck, and that can be a hindrance. When I saw the Kickstarter, I actually was thinking about backing the game. I don't have any of these games in my collection, and this game can be a blast with the right group. I don't think the price is right, however, so I think I will probably pick it up in retail, where it will be a lot cheaper, I guess. I almost skipped over the part that we need to pay VAT over the £79 plus shipping. So we are looking at somewhere around £120 for just a base game that has pretty much nothing more than air inside the box. Let us know what you think of Worms the Board Game in the comments. If you have any suggestions on games to cover, let us know as well. Thank you for watching this video and we'll see you in the next video.